What do a bull, a goat, a lamb, a dove, a human, and the Son of God have in common? Blood. So you should be warned, as we study the topic of the tabernacle, there's blood everywhere. Why is this? Many consider there to be excessive slaughter in the Israelite religion. It's interesting that the name of the first man and of all humanity after him was Adam. The word for blood is that word, but without the A, equals dam. Adam's name literally means to show blood in the face. That is to flush or to blush or to be of a ruddy complexion. What irony that the color in the cheeks that shows we have life was also the indication that death had come to the human race through sin when our first parents were ashamed before the Lord. Here are three statements from Scripture that help us understand why the blood was so valued by God. Number one, quote, the life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. When God thought of blood, he thought of the life it made possible. Every life was precious, for it was given as a gift from him. Number two, quote, without shedding of blood, there is no remission, Hebrews 9, 22. God declared by the shedding of blood the costliness of sin. Sin brought death, and so required the death of another to requite it. Three, we were, quote, redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19. In every drop of blood shed at Jewish altars, God saw a token of the ultimate blood sacrifice when his son's precious blood would be given. Quote, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, Ephesians 1, 7. Thus God saw the value of life in the blood. He saw sin's consequence of death in the shedding of blood, but he also saw life eternal through the gift of the precious blood of his dear son. However, we see the priests were to make sure that not one, but two specific parts of the sacrifice were given to the Lord. Quote, Aaron's sons, the priests, shall sprinkle the blood all around on the altar. The fat that covers the entrails and all the fat that is on the entrails and the fat that is on them by the flanks and the fatty lobe attached to the liver above the kidneys, he shall remove and Aaron's son shall burn it on the altar, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Leviticus 3, 2 to 5. The blood is the life of the offering and was to be sprinkled all around the altar. The fat was the energy of the offering and was to be burned on the altar. These were considered the choicest parts of the animal. Now, without question, God deserves the best. But in requiring the blood and fat to be offered to him alone, see verse 17, was he keeping the best back from the offerer? Did God need the blood and the fat? Of course not. We were the ones who needed it. The blood was the basis of the offerer's redemption. For without shedding of blood, there is no remission, Hebrews 9.22. Sprinkled on the altar, it was a public display of God's satisfaction with the value of the offering on behalf of the offerer. And the fat? When the fire ignited it, it became a sweet aroma to the Lord. That fat was the basis of the offerer's acceptance with the Lord. What we give to God, he keeps for us. So said Jesus, whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Mark 8, 35. Thus Paul's ringing declaration, I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able 
to keep what I have committed to him until that day. 2 Timothy 1.12. God is not a taker. He is the giver of every good and perfect gift. James 1.17. What he received through Christ's death, he has used for our blessing. <music> 